five, four, three, two, one. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. Yes, sir, reading you loud and clear. Um, it's got two companies that are partners right now, Boeing and SpaceX, and we're going to certify the rocket and capsule that they're building the crew transport system, which would include the mission ops, the launch ops, and the recovery systems. And um, then we're going to go buy seats on that rocket and put um, four of our astronauts on it and have them go up to space station and return back from space station. And so um, that's what my main purpose is. Um, luckily, um, SpaceX and Boeing are out here, so our office has got a really nice relationship going on with both of these companies. And um, we're trying to make sure that you know, it's going to be a safe operations for the crew. That's our primary role, and um, we've got a really good thing going with both of these companies. It's very exciting to be a part of this. Um, I think you guys are going to see some launches at, toward the end of 2016 for the commercial crew program. I think you're going to see um, some astronauts going up in the um, 2017 time frame, as long as everything stays okay and, and all. But, um, I think it's very, very exciting. I mean, who doesn't want to see, you know, NASA astronauts getting back on a U.S.-led commercial company, getting back to space station? It's actually one of the complex, one of the launch complexes out on the pad. Uh -huh. And I mean, I'm sorry, on the Cape side, I said the pad. Out on the Cape side there, okay. um, they have made arrangements with the Air Force um, to have a certain area of, you know, land out there to where they can come and. And bring it back. I know they're working with the range, and they've got to work with the FAA to get concurrence for that thing to come back in. You know, it's the they were doing it earlier on the barge, and they've been able to from the testing that they were doing on that barge, they've been able to figure out that they can land it where they want to land it. Now it's just a matter of being able to, you know, land it in its full um, capacity so they can go reuse it. Right. And, and do you have a how close can you be to the launch, right? Okay. All right. So that's set up on a couple of different things. One is, you know, this is being on NASA property. Um, you know, will the government, how much will the government set up viewing site or will SpaceX arrange for a viewing site? But there will be a, um, a quantity distance type analysis that will be done and it will be done by, um, NASA in the range where they actually go figure out how close you can have personnel because that's part of the public safety type thing and so um, I, I don't know what that is for the heavy at this point you know um, I'm pretty sure they'll do it based on that and um, then they'll set up some viewing sites but I, I do know SpaceX has got grand plans to um, have a really nice viewing site here you know because they'll have some pretty you know some customers that are very excited about being as, as close as they can possibly be so I know they're working that right? Um, just um, except for lightning. Yep. Except you mentioned that if they do recover the first stage from this next launch, that it becomes the test article. Was there talk about what happens if they don't recover? Are they going to bring in a specific first stage for to, to pick up that, or is it contingent on recovering the first stage? You know, that's part of their internal plans, and I um, I, I don't know what their contingency is if that, if that situation doesn't happen there. But I know that Elon is very excited about trying to get you know, something in here for them to start processing. And so if that doesn't work out, I'm sure they'll figure out a plan B if they don't already have a plan B for that. The, uh, is the SpaceX plan to use this pad only for Falcon Heavy and the regular Falcon is going to be still using 41? Or so they plan, you know, they build a lot of versatility into their uh, plan. So certainly this is the only pad they have to support a Falcon Heavy. Um, but this pad can support regular single stick Falcon, drag, you know, for commercial payloads or for the commercial crew. Now, this will be the only pad right now that can support commercial crew launches. So this springtime, you're going to see a crew access arm and um, uh, some other modifications happen that need to go and support, you know, having the crew out here. And so right now they don't have that arm out there yet. But that's all going through design trades right now. And so, um, but that's going to be the work they're planning for the spring. And then they plan to have a second test launch, you know, um, or test flight with the actual crew. And that'll be in the 2017 time frame. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, the RSS, I mean, did, is there a reason it has to come down? I thought it was just sort of out of the way and they could just sort of leave it be. And then that was also, I don't know if you mentioned this before, but I um, just wanted to ask about the, uh, the crew 
slide wires. Um, okay, there are emergency egress basically going to stay the same, or is there any mods to that? Okay, so we got two questions going. All right, so remind me of the second one. Why don't we get back to it, okay? So the first question was, does the RSS have to come down? I, I will tell you, if I was SpaceX, I would I would definitely have it coming down. Um, it is a maintenance kind of issue. It's a FOD issue. You know, there are corrosion activities. It doesn't, in this environment, it doesn't take long for corrosion to start happening. And then you would create some kind of FOD that could be, you know, damaging to your rocket during launch. So um, if you're not using it, you really do want to go ahead and get it off of your pad and get your pad, you know, only to the essential pieces that you have to have. Um, so I, if, if I was SpaceX, I would try to get that down also. Um, the other is a weight, you know, it's a weight added onto the pad. So as long as you get that weight off, then that means that's some, you know, weight you can bring to the pad and other capacities that you may want to have. So that's kind of the primary reasons they would do that. Okay, emergency egress. Um, so SpaceX right now does have the slide wire baskets and um, the cables aren't there right now, I think, um, for the shuttle emergency egress system that they used, okay? Um, but, so their original design was to use a very similar type of emergency egress system. Um, I do know SpaceX is looking at uh, doing some trades with that and figuring out what is the best type of system. Um, they've been working, or I mean, we have provided them some um, trades that the SLS and Orion has done on emergency egress just to try to talk a little bit about, um, to show them what's the work that you know NASA's been doing on um, upgrading emergency egress systems. And so um, they're off in work on that and that'll be some more work that we'll see this springtime also. Can you talk more? Customer, or maybe, you know, Elon's got plans that none of us know about yet for a super Falcon Heavy. I, you know, I'm making that up, I don't know. Okay. Um, Jimmy, you've been here for a while and worked prior programs and yes. all that. If you could just maybe speak to the, when it eventually happens, whether it's whatever launch, not a crude launch, but the first launch off the 39A, okay. kind of the uh, boost, morale boost and uh, excitement in case well, you will I'll feel to have you. a launch coming from here oh, again. Well, you know, it not will be. Everybody knows, right? Launches are big, visible, they're exciting. The noise, the rumble, the anticipation of getting to launch, and then actually, you know, seeing it. Smoke and fire is very, very exciting. Um, I will tell you, I think the whole morale is starting, it, or not starting, it has changed. Just watching these companies go from construction to getting ready to pr start processing, the starting of testing is just the first piece of getting to that launch, right? And where you really know, hey, I'm done with the paper designs, I I'm done with doing CAD, I am now building, I'm doing production for the rocket, I'm doing production for the capsule, and I'm actually putting this thing together, getting ready for, you know, to go launch. So all the testing that goes into um, doing that production work and all is, it gets everybody excited. So, because you know, you're on the path, you're moving, you're going. So um, I would say you're gonna start feeling that momentum now. It is, it is building now. And um, because this is what we like to do out here, right? We wanna test, we wanna touch hardware, we wanna feel it, we wanna test it, process it, put it together, and then we wanna launch it. And so that's what's real exciting. And that we see from both these companies, that's where we are. Did you did you talk about certifying the pad at all? The pad will be yeah that's part of the. And when that's going to be done? When well, the, it has to be done for crew? Well, that's part of the um, certification process. Okay, and so when you certify the pad, we're not. It won't be done like you go certify the pad, then you certify the rocket. All four pieces, the ground system, the mission op systems, the um, you know, the launch vehicle and the spacecraft all has to be certified together. And so there won't be one piece without the other, you know, being certified. So we're looking at doing all of that as, you know, one big kind of certification effort. And um, there are milestones that are laid out and, um, you know, that build up to that certification. And, um, and we're starting to click down those milestones right now. When, when do you expect to? You know, with these um, companies. It's very different. Don't, don't let me tell you, you know, <laughs> don't kid anybody. The, the way that you work with the commercial company is, you know, very different from the traditional NASA one. It's very exciting to be able to work with them. They can do things the government, you know, just can't do in the same amount of time. And um, so it's very, very exciting to go see, you know, see this happen.